Okay, hi everyone. Hello everyone, welcome to the call. I'm just going to share my screen and press play. So hopefully you can see our lovely chimp. This looks like the one from Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you how we came to this. Um, but first we need to rewind and go all the way back to the beginning of like, well, how do you get going and how do you get started with it all? Um, but you can see the this is the the screenshot that we did for the call. Um, and there's me as a magician in the corner. Uh, it, it's all very um, exciting to say the least. Um, so mid journey is the tool. <clears throat> I mean, we've tried them all. We've looked at them all. They've all got their place. But mid journey seems to be going in a direction that I really like. Um, it's still got problems with hands. I think quite a lot of them have got problems with hands. For some reason, we've got 10 fingers sometimes or three. Um, but there's little tricks you can do, which uh, we won't go into on this call, but you can kind of fix it. But I'm sure the AI will get better and better and things like hands won't be a problem. But that's not going to spoil our fun. So if we go across to, uh, I've, done, I've actually done a slide, can you believe it? <laughs> So getting started with Midjourney. Can everyone hear me all right, by the way? The first time I'm using Keynote on Zoom. Yeah, your audio is coming across. I don't know if it, it how's the volume for everybody. Okay, we're good. Excellent. Okay, so getting started with Midjourney. Uh, Midjourney runs through an app called Discord. And I'm sure quite a few of you have heard of this app. Uh, you go to discord.com and it's it's a messaging app that people write bots for. Uh, it's used a lot in um, big groups that have got, in fact, crypto uses it a lot. There's a lot of Discord groups that talk about crypto and um, there's a lot of art ones. And I suppose that's why they've used this and it gets products out faster because you don't have to write a web front end. You can just write an API and branch it into the Discord. And it's got its benefits and drawbacks using it doing it this way but i've managed to well you'll, you'll see how i've cut out the noise a bit later so you need a, you need the discord app if you haven't got it go to discord.com it's windows and mac uh, so you'll be able to download it and install it and i'll, I'll show you as we go forward and then obviously the, you need the mid journey bot and that's at midjourney.com um and you create an account there and basically they've got three plans. You've got a free one, which you're gonna burn quite quickly. Um, and then there's the next level up, uh, and then there's a uh, one called private. I've just got the middle one for now, because I'm gonna show you a way of keeping all the noise away. Um, but the one thing you've got to remember is any images you create, uh, even if no one can see the link to get to them, Mid Journey knows where they are and th there's joint copyright between the two of you. So if they like it and they want to use it, you can't do anything about that. If you pay the high subscription, it's about $60 a month. Uh, you can have a private section and then the images are yours. Um, and of course, there's the option three that if you care to go down, it is optional. Um, once you've got the top two, you, you will be going down a rabbit hole. Um, a, a rabbit hole of, of fun, to be honest. Um, but obviously, you, that's why I put optional. <laughs> you don't have to go down the rabbit hole. So let me uh, go across to, uh, I'll just come out of my slides and we'll go to browser. And Discord is at discord.com, as you can see here. And then you click on download and you've got download for Mac. Uh, because he basically knows I'm on a Mac. And if you were on a Windows machine, he would say down for Windows. And then when you've installed that, you've probably, or may, may or not, may not have seen it before, but I'll quickly drag the app into view. Can you see that? And then this is the, um, the Discord app. And then... You have different servers down the left, all the ones that you join. So if you join a big group about marketing and they've got a Discord server, it'll be down the side. 
and then you just click on it and there's the mid journey one there's the open ai one so if i click on the open ai you can see all the people that are in there and you can see all the different rooms lounges and develop all the different uh, areas and servers they've got uh, set up so you can imagine when there's lots and lots of people so if i clicked into say this one you could see there's lots of people doing stuff talking and it can get quite um mental if i'm honest so the trick is um let me just quickly show you uh, mid journey so if you go to midjourney.com you click on join the beta and then you'll be able to create an account uh, it's open to everybody now um, they're still calling it beta because because they can but it, you know there's always new versions coming out version four dropped about uh, two months ago maybe not that six weeks something like that version four which is which, which is why we're on this call now because version four is exceptional um so you basically you create an account join the beta and then obviously it, it knows i'm already in so it's pushed me into the discord um app uh but as soon as you've got those two things and you've created the discord uh, app and the mid journey account it will automatically bounce you into here with mid journeys server with, on the on the left you can see it's a little white icon with a picture of what i think is a little sailboat and then you can see everything that's going on in here and there's lots of information down the left and the left side is um, like you've got support You've got newcomers and if you're a newbie you can go in here and you can see what's going on you can see other people creating you know it's quite busy but it's useful because you can see what other people are doing and get some hints and tips so that is how you get set up so if i go back to my slide so we've got that and then to avoid the noise, <clears throat> we this is what I've done, and it's you we create your own server in Discord. So in doing so, that puts you in your own little private area and it protects your um images as well and what you're working on, not from mid-journey, <clears throat> but other people can't see your links unless you invite people into your server. So if you create a server and you've got, say, a colleague who's doing the same thing, you can both be in the same one. You can chat and you can see what each other's doing, which is quite useful. <clears throat> but it's good for, like I've called this slide, avoid the noise. And you can always pop back into the others to see what's going on. But you don't want your images scrolling off with like 10 or 20 images underneath it. And then you've got to scroll back to find out if yours is finished. And it's a because it's so popular, it's really busy. So if you create your own server, you're in a good place. And I'll show you how to do that. Oops, you can tell I've not used this before. There we go. So once you've created the um, your server in Discord, you add the mid journey bot to the server. So let me show you how to do that. Get the app going. Get rid of that. There we go. Let's hide all the matrix. There we go. So once you're in the Discord, there's a plus button here. And if you click it, it says create my own server. So if you click that one and then just say it's for me and my friends. You can upload an image if you want, but you you know, you don't have to. Uh, I put a picture of me so I can tell which one's mine just by looking at it. And then you put a name. I called it Mash Away and Server because that's my username. And then you click Create, and that's it. It creates you your own server. And there's my Mash Away and Server. And as you can see, it's only got my things in here. So there's some stuff that I've been working on, which <clears throat> I will talk about shortly. Um, but you can see that I've now avoided all the noise and this is my private area but you you have to add the bot into your server to get it to work so you go back over to um, mid journey and you pick one of the busy rooms 
So let's look at this one. Then you'll see over on the right hand side, Mid Journey Bot is in this room. So you 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 click on that, and then you click on Add to Server, and then it says, "Do you want to add the Mid Journey Server, Mid Journey Bot, sorry, to to a server?" And you say, "Yeah," and you select the server below, and it only shows you the ones that belong to you. So you select your server, you click Continue, and then that puts the uh, that puts the mid journey bot into your server. So you're good to go. So you end up with server, mid journey bot, and that's all that's in the room except for you as well. So that there's um, there's no noise going on. Whatever I create, if someone's got the link, they can get to the image. But if they don't have the link, they can't see the link because they're not invited into my server. So they can't see what's going on. So I think this is a great way to sit and focus and work without all that clutter going on. Completely up to you. You can go into the mid journeys and do it there. Um, but I would uh, I would do it this way. Um, let's quickly mention. Um, mid journeys. Um, there we go, manage sub. They've got a free one, which gives you, um, this is the one I'm on, sorry. There we go. I, I'm pretty sure they've got a free one, um, but it, it's, it'll be, you'll burn it pretty quick. They've got a basic plan, which is um, $10, as you can see, and that gives you 200 generations. Then if you go to the $30 a month, you actually get 50, they don't then talk about image numbers, you talk, they talk about CPU time. So you get 15 hours of fast generations. So you get priority of using their uh, big graphic CPUs to generate the images and you, you have 15 hours a month, um, which, which is plenty, I, it's, it's more than enough. Um, unless you want to go private, the only difference between these two is that you get double the amount of time, but you get stealth image generation. So no one can basically take your images. Uh, Mid Journey can still, I believe, because it's their platform, but they will not put them anywhere that anyone else can get to them. So if you create something that, you know, you it's unique to you and you're using it for some commercial purpose, then you, you know, go with that one. But the way I've used this one with a private server, I'm pretty sure that that's, that's a good way to go because uh, no one can see what I'm doing anyway. So. Let's, how would you make your first image? So the first thing to do is when, you, when you've got it set up and you're in the Discord, you need to do a forward slash settings. And then that will tell the bot to throw up some options for you to click on and decide what you want to do. We've then got forward slash prefer suffix. And then because basically what you do is you have to type what you want. I'll say, I want a camel in the desert, for example, and it will try and create you one. But there's there's things that you can add on the end, you know, what style, what what version, what what um, what kind of um, rendering engine do you want to use? There's lots of different things. And if you use those things regularly, you can use the prefer suffix so that it will always append what you type with those options. So well, let me show you how that works. So forward slash settings and press return and it will pass this to the bot and you get these options and you can see how far they've come. Um, I'm on the uh, mid journey version four. Um, Niji mode, um, I haven't used it as much uh, at all really at the moment. Um, it's, it's, it's basically um, um, an anime kind of uh, engine generation. So if you select Niji mode, 
everything you do will be in a kind of an anime style. I mean, it's it's cool, but if, if that's not what you want, stick to MJ version four. Um, base quality is, is fine because if you if you go up to the next one, you'll be burning two times the cost every time. You don't want that. You want to see what it's got, and if you like it, then you can upscale and um, all the all the good things. Uh, regular upscale is fine, and then we're obviously in public mode because I don't have the the higher subscription. Remix mode is worth ticking. Uh, remix mode allows you to, when you click on an image that you've done before, it'll give you the prompt for you to tweak so that you can throw it back in and get a slightly different variation. So if you like the look of something, um, but you, instead of having a hillside, you want a mountainside, you could you could click it and you could just change hill for mountain and resend it, that kind of thing. So to actually get it to create something, uh, you type imagine. If you press return, it says, OK, here's the prompt. So let's say uh, let's do something um, simple. Let's say we want a, a castle in the woods at night. And you can see. I've got an append, append in, uh, how would you say that? An appendage with dash dash AR, uh, which is the uh, aspect ratio. So three to two. So it's, they don't do a 16 nine, but three to two is the um, three across and two high. I'm always telling me I want to use version four, and I'm always saying I want to use the 4B of the style engine that they've got. So these these are kind of the latest ones because you could say version three if you want and it will go, it will use version three and version two and so on. But if you're always going to be using version four and that that aspect ratio, then you can do um, prefix suffix, and then you type in there the. Like I've typed in minus minus AR, which is the aspect ratio, that's, and I've typed that in there so that every time I do a prompt, it will it will add that on the end for me to save you having to keep doing it. Okay, as you can see, it's generated four images. So if we click it, we can have a look at these images. Now, every time I see it, I'm blown away. Uh, all I did. Was typing castle in the woods at night. That's all I did. And we've got four variations. Now, if you like the first one, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, you simply you can upscale one to four, or you can tell it to do a variation on any of the ones. So if I if I like number four. But I wanted it to do, you know, give me four more based on this one. You just click V4. Now, <clears throat> because we had remix tick time, it pops this prompt up. So this allows you to, do you want to slightly tweak it or do you just want to submit it? If you don't have the remix on, you won't get this prompt. It's a proper geek out Friday this week, isn't it? <laughs> Have we got any questions while it's rendering? Yeah, we got a few questions. Um, and uh, we'll ask about, is there a difference between Mac and using Discord in the browser? No. OK. And he asked, do you think Discord will be used by other SaaS providers? Um, and what do you think of the experience of doing this with MidJourney? Yeah. Um, would we put our products on Discord? <laughs> okay. Um, I can see why they've done it. Would we do it? No. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to be fair, to, to make sure you don't get any issues, I would download the app rather than try and do it in a browser because they are using, they are, you are connecting a, a bot. So if, every, every time you open the browser version, you, it may, you, know, you won't be able to create your own. So, so, to be honest, I haven't tried it, but I, I would benefit that um, it would work best using the app. But there's no difference from Mac and PC, and they've got an app for both. Yeah. 
So you can even use you can even use it on your phone. So you, there you go. It's created four variations based on that one, and I quite like they all quite similar. Number three. So if you like number three, you can upscale it with U3, and it will push the job down to upscale it. So while that's upscaling, so now we've created our first image, quite simple. We'll go back to my slideshow. Incidentally, the backdrops of all my slides, I did in mid-journey. Now the abstract keyword is really, really, it's gonna be your friend to do some really, really clever things. So for example, if you add abstract to create an image, you can create image one. So the background of this slide was done with an abstract keyword. And what you can do then is you can use that image to influence the AI on its outcome. So you tell it to create something, you then use that outcome that it came out with to then create the image that you want. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So we do forward slash imagine, and then we paste the URL link, and then you just add your prompt afterwards. So let's go back to uh, Discord. So while that's still doing that, we could say imagine, and then we can do. Um, an abstract design with right color. I think it knows both spellings. And you can influence it by saying um, greens, green and blue, for example. Uh, you could put um, swirls, you could put flowers. And you just separate things with commas, press return. You can see my uh, foresty image is now coming down. It looks like it might have canceled the one I was doing. Oops. There it is. Oh, it's done I thought it would. So flowers, swirls, greens, that kind of thing. Um, so if we liked uh, number two, you can upscale two. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that's better. Now it's actually finished. Wow. That's that's incredible. I'll go with two. So upscale two. And then the idea is we can then put the link of the upscaled version back into Midjourney and then say, use that as an influence when you create my next image based on the prompt that we put afterwards. So if we were looking for... Um, Oh, we've got to wait for it to upscale because I need the... Well, that's doing that. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Um, do you think MidJourney is the best AI art tool or any others uh, to consider that are free? Um, Dali 2 is, is pretty good. You, you can get a certain amount of images for free. But it's not many, but 10, I think. So you'll soon burn that up. Um, stable diffusion is, an, is another, that's a geek out Friday all on its own. Um, you can actually install that. If you've got a powerful enough machine, you can, someone's done a fork of it and it's on it's like a GitHub. It's, it's a complicated install, but it, there are steps to follow and you can run it on your own machine. Or, which might be in a 
course next year, there's a, a Google co collab, and you can use Stable Diffusion on that for free. And, and they, they allow you to use one of their collaboration machines to run it. And it's, it's all set up for you to press the buttons. Um, they've all got their strengths. Uh, I can see you're using mid-journey to create things, which you then put into Stable Diffusion to create characters with a theme. So if he was like, if he was creating um, a character that you want continue, um, continuity, but you say, I want them all in a pen, I want them all in an umbrella, um, you can create different poses using the same person in Stable Diffusion. You can kind of do it in this, but it's a bit easier to do the base character in this because it's better and pull the base character across into Stable Diffusion, and then that allows you to create these poses. Um, so if you wanted to, and here's a tip that uh, for the course that may be coming next year, if you wanted to write a children's book, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, um, that's how you would create the characters for the pages, so, that, so you've got continuity. Um, so if you've got, like, um, I don't know, Little Johnny's footballer story, you'd want the same character in different uh, poses, kicking a ball, running, at school, that kind of thing. Um, there, what, there is another one as well. I can't think what it's called. Well, let's let's go back on this because I mean, what I guess the answer to that is um, this is all new technology, and mm -hmm. it's come out in the last six months. The one, the one thing that Wayne and I have noticed is if somebody's already putting out training on how to do it and how, how to do artwork or NFTs, and this is what you can use this for is NFTs, um, you should kind of follow what they're recommending because they're, they're not recommending tools that don't work for them. Um, yep. we, we have Jasper Art. I use Jasper Art. It's a little bit easier for me uh, to use because of, of the prompts. This this can take you down a, a, a rabbit hole that um, will spend a lot of time um, learning learning how to do it. But the results on Mid Journey are a lot better than what you're going to get with Jasper Art. Go Charlie has a you know they have a built in. I, I'd say it's it's third grade level. Uh, Jasper Art is going to be maybe eighth grade level this is this is college level artwork right here um so you know in investigating a bunch of free tools that really haven't fully developed is is not our forte is we, we can tell you what's out there but we'd rather spend our time with mm -hmm. with the product development that we're doing right now but yeah. there is a good question wayne is is what do you do with it, ai art yeah, I'm getting to that. <clears throat> so let's, uh, we've got this rendered. So if we can open it up in full, if you right click on it, you can copy the link. Then you can go down to here and you can do another imagine. And then you can paste that link and then you do a space. So what we're telling the, the bot now is, I want you to use that image that you've just created for me in the next render as influence. So now we can put something like, um, uh, I don't know, has anyone got any ideas? Let's say um, a robot, robot that auto blogs. <laughs> Computer. Um, social media while that's one while that one's working um can you just repeat that using that same influence image and just put alice in wonderland yep so that's um i've still got it in the clipboard imagine paste space alice in wonderland And you could, I think you could do three jobs at the same time before it says, whoa, you know, slow down a minute. <laughs> uh, 
And while that's working, can you scroll up? You've got some other background images. Ooh, that looks really good. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? Wow. So you can see how it's influenced the abstract. Wow. But I also said I wanted like a robot. It's amazing, really, isn't it? Yep. I mean, number four is pretty good. I like that. I like in fact, that. They're, all, they're all good in their own way. Yeah. Um, but you can just keep, you know, oh, and here's the Alice in Wonderland one. <laughs> Wow. That's, good. That's kind of freaky right there. Yeah. I think number three, probably. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, so let's let's say you've got, uh, I mean, jump in the gun a bit, but let's say you, you've got a blog post um, and you wanted a featured image that no one else has got. This is where you can use AI art. Um, you, basically, you could just imagine it. Um Computer, desk, Apple, Mac, robot typing. And I'll show you a bit later how to get some more elaborate prompts. <clears throat> so while that's doing that, go back to my little slide share. In fact, if I click on the next slide. So you can add your own images. So you, you can upload an image. So if you've got a picture of yourself or you've got a pet or you've got a picture of your product, for example, let's say you sell, um, in fact, Scott Rogers is on the call. He sells um, those boxes that he makes out of wood. You could upload one of those and then you could get AI to influence it in a really cool way. And that would be your sales product image. So that's a, another way to use it. But you can upload images to Discord and use them as a reference point. While you we're then, on the call, Scott, can you message me a link to your wooden wood, one of your wood boxes, and we'll do that. And to hear, can you? I'm not. I'm not sure he's on the call. To be honest. Yeah, he's on the call. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and to hear could, if you'll. Send me a link to your logo. So we're going to do two of these for you today. Cool. So you use that image to influence the AI, like you saw with the abstract, but it's your own image. And then basically you just do um, the same the image and then you combine it with the prompt. So if we go back to Discord. Oh, no, look, now we're talking. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> this one's pretty good because we, we wanted an apple mac with a robot um down here we've got an app we've got an imac as well this one's probably better number three number two is interesting because that looks like a, a potential old-fashioned kind of keyboard mac um uh, but it's it's just done whatever it felt now this number three, I would, I would, I'm going to upscale number three because that could easily be a featured image for some automation post or SEO or something. Yeah. Now here's the trick, guys. You want your post to get clicked, or you want your blog to get clicked? Um, you make a featured image like this. This is going to get the click because it's something unique. It's going to be something very outstanding. Um, use it as a, you know, something similar in your YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, the YouTube thumbnails are, are going to pop like crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially take this image and drop it into Canva and kind of properly format, format it. What, what Wayne gave me was two images yesterday. He gave me the, the, was that gorilla or chimpanzee? Yeah, the and, chimp. And his Im image. And then I went over to Canva and said, I want a YouTube thumbnail. And it I copied the 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 structure. I just replaced the images. 
that's about how creative I am with uh, artwork. <laughs> I can write the words in there and uh, cut and paste the images. It really does cause people to stop what they're doing on social media and look at what you're saying. Now, you know, you may not be the artist. I'm not the artist, but if you can imagine any of those four images that uh, Wayne just did, he he really didn't spend a lot of time thinking about artwork. He just um, typed in four words and the style set and any of those four images would be great for a blog post or, or as a YouTube thumbnail or even a, a social media ad. And if you imagine this, take, if you take a logo, which hopefully somebody will send us a logo, the first logo in the chat will, will get um, to be mid journeyed. Um, Okay, now what are, you, what are you going to do with this here? Okay. So wow. now, now it's been upscaled. We, we can see that there's a, actually a, an image on the screen. And, and it's, the wires are in more detail, keyboard. <clears throat> you could have a, uh, this could be a thumbnail or a, a featured image for an article about. Um, Uh, even though the robot is looking kind of like he's, as though he's worn out, he'll never stop. <laughs> so he'll never stop doing your blog post for you. It's like you could you could you could do an article about RSS Master and use that as the thumbnail, and and you could take, if you took it into Photoshop, you could superimpose over this bit of the screen the a screenshot from say RSS Master or your own product or whatever it is on there. It wouldn't be difficult. Just take it in and angle it so that it fits. Wow. Brilliant. As Scott Bowling asked a, 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 an <laughs> excellent question. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> I think the, the answer is yes, but uh, could this be used for print on demand? Um, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's going to be quite a few uh, stores that we open ourselves next year with we, uh, we have AI a, art. Yeah, we have a site called wearitart.com, and we can print mouse pads, coffee mugs, T-shirts. In fact, if, if you're part of the beta on the AI indexer, we'll probably be using it to do the, the beta cups. Um, but it's, it's sitting there waiting for us to populate it with Wayne's creations. Now we're probably going to do that, turn some of these into NFTs um, and sell them that way. We may even take some of them and make multiple configurations, like like the chimpanzee that you saw at the beginning of the show. Is if we could take him and put him in different poses uh, with the the magic crystal, and and I mean we could do a storybook with it. We could uh, illustrate a lot of you know content with it. But we're we're going to be using this as a side, not a side hustle, but just something fun that we can take, you know, creatives that we've done and, and put them in our, our store to sell as print on demand. Um, and Garen asked another a good question too, is any way to automate this using a string of keywords or titles from an RSS feed? Um, it's funny you should ask that because I was doing something just before the call. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, I don't think you can yet, but I but I was testing it by throwing a title in. I've got a um, I've got a masher site called um, uh, I forgot what it's called now. It's the boxing one. Seconds away, and I noticed there was an article in there about the the boxer uh, Fury, Tommy Fury. No, Tyson Fury. And I basically, I'll scroll up and I'll show you what I did. I lifted the title from that blog post. There it is. And I just dropped it in. And all it was was Tyson Fury says he is happy to retire and not fight Anthony Joshua. That was the title of the blog post. It created these four things. 
I mean, it clearly looks like it. I went with this one and I upscaled it. Now, I could right click that, save it, and I could put it on that blog post, which I probably will just after the call. What we believe is going to happen is when they start dropping sophisticated APIs, we potentially could pass the title from RSS measure to something like this and get an image back and use it as a featured image that no one else has got, which I think is marvelous. <laughs> but we've got to be careful that it doesn't create something we don't like, especially if we set it and forget it. So that's, that's the worry at the moment, because it might come back with something that looks awful, or it might come back with something it won't come back with anything that's bad because it's all been banned. So you haven't got to be worried about, you know, not safe for work kind of images that, that all that's been removed from it. And if you try to type anything that's a bit, you know, dubious, it will tell you that it's a banned word. And if you try and circumvent it, you'll get your account banned. Um, so they've thought of that, but it might come back with something that just doesn't look like him. You know, so that's... It, but when things like this are on version five and six, and it's it's going to be it's going to be breathtaking. I know it is because it's already amazing. So let's go back to my. Uh, oh, have we got an image to try and do. Um, I sent you two images on Facebook Messenger. Oh, okay, brilliant. We got a logo, and then a um, looks like a box or something like that. So if I go into to here and I'll drag that up to here. Garen, that is a good question about um, using keywords or titles from an RSS feed. And like Wayne said, it's it, it probably in six months we can do it. And if we can, we will. <laughs> yeah. In fact, there will be one day when you show up on Facebook and, and Wayne and I will be doing a live show where we'll shall I share my screen and he'll show you exactly how to do it and the toggle to do from within RSS Masher. That's what we're hoping. So, you know, these are product developments that we're looking into, but we always have to start with, we, we were kind of right at the very beginning of AI and so are y'all. Um, AI copy and we've automated AI copy. We're just waiting for everybody else to catch up to us uh, with, with their own APIs. Article Forge has an API, Jasper doesn't, uh, Go Charlie doesn't, uh, Phrase doesn't yet. They, they have an API, but it's not, not what we need. But when these tools have their own API, we'll be able to use them. I think Yive is working on something, but you know, it's, that's, that's a hit or miss on when, when that will uh, show up. But when these do, when they have an API, we're ready to fully automate it into your RSS master streams. Uh, I, I hope you appreciate that because um, I've been asking the same question to, to Wayne is, when can we do this? <laughs> when can we automate this? <laughs> so hopefully we can automate it sooner than rather than later. So we, we are on the cusp of AI full automation. And, and I hope y'all appreciate that as far as RSS Master goes, is we are, we're ready to fully automate anything that, that, is out there as far as AI goes. Uh, it's very, very exciting to be on this. And that's why we've been talking about it for the last three or four shows is AI um, tools out there, they're getting better. The, the quality of the, of the copy is getting outstanding. Um, and the artwork right now, as you can see, is I'd use any of these images that he's made as a feature image or put them in a YouTube thumbnail. So very, very exciting stuff. And print on demand, it's going to revolutionize the, the industry. Yeah. And if you're comparing is, I think mid journey is, if you're going to invest your time to learn something, mid journey would be the better one to learn. And if I took that prompt, computer desk, Apple Mac, robot typing, and put it into Jasper art, I'm going to get something kind of looks like, a fifth grader did it maybe go charlie's gonna look like like i said is a third grader did it with crayons um th this is just 
the the we're showing you the top of the line right now that is fairly easy to incorporate in your workflows. I think that this is why we're doing this Geek Out Friday with this tool because we've already looked at the others and know, noticed that this tool is the, the standout tool at the moment. Yeah. Now there are there are better tools probably out there, but it you have to have an, a significant investment in computer processing power and everything else, and you have to. It's kind of like Adobe Photoshop is you'll never be a master at it because some of these other tools really require you to kind of program the words and know everything in there. Uh, this is a fairly easy to use, and hopefully everybody on the call will start using it. Uh, very exciting. Wayne, I've sent you in Messenger yeah. a logo and a box. Let's yeah. see what we can do with, with okay. what y'all provided. So you see here, we've got a plus sign. So if we click the plus sign, and we can go to upload a file. So if I go across to Geekout Fridays, we've got some files that I'm about to use, but this is the, the box that you've sent across. Um, and if you, they, they basically, they sit there waiting. Uh, and if you press return, it'll, it'll actually upload it into the Discord. So there's the box. Now we can click on that and we can do right, and we can do copy link. So now we can influence that in the AI. So we can do imagine, we can paste that link space, and then we can add anything to it now. So we could say, um, how about um, California Vineyard, uh, California Vineyards um, at harvest time or something like that? Yeah, yeah, here's a good one. Um, Scott says, just make it Valentine's Day. Oh, okay, we'll let that one run and we'll do it again. Okay. It's quite likely to see what that one did. Uh, oh, I've done that already. Uh, imagine that one, Valentine's Day. <laughs> I think the, if you was going to do it for real, I would not have it on the paper because uh, the paper may skew the outcome because you yeah. just want the product box. And it's not very good at adding text. Yeah, no. if you want to add text, just do it in Canva or Photoshop. Yeah, do anything afterwards once you've got the image. I'm sure it will change, but at the moment it's it's kind of strange. Wow. Yeah, the wow. Paper, may, paper may have messed it up, but that item number four or number, maybe even with it open with the wine bottle in it, so you can try out different pictures here. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I've noticed if, if you've got a clipped image, so there's there's no background at all. It's a PNG. You you can kind of like superimpose them into like forest scenes, um, you know, on the subway and anything that comes to mind. You can put your product in. I, I think the 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 logo that I think that's a PNG. I had to. Um, I noticed wow. there was like something at the bottom of it, like lots of different images. So I've cropped, I've just cropped it and wow. But I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at this one. There's somebody there's, there's put a little person in holding the balloon. It's changed the box a little bit as well. Yeah. And then if we go to this one, the Californian vineyard. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I can guarantee that uh, they'll be doing option three on my slide when they start going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. Scott says rabbit hole 589. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so that's Aaron, a, a good question. Place your own product on Hollywood red carpet events. So, that's so yeah. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can do a lot of that. So th this is the logo. So if we, um, copy that link. We could say one slash imagine. Put, paste it in, and then we could say um, um, 
Hollywood star. And of course, you can do multiples, which I'll explain in a bit, which is if, for those of you that saw the Christmas card, that was that was a double influence kind of there was like a I got it to create the abstract for the background for the Christmas. And then uploaded pictures of me and Damon and then mixed it and told it to do a Sandra and an elf. And then once we got all those images, I then took them all to Photoshop and created the image that you saw. Yeah, take that same logo and, and put it uh, and do like a Christmas tree ornament or something like that. Oh, that's a good one. Bauble, isn't it? We'll put ornament there. Yep. Ornament. Is it mant or mint? It's O R N A. Instead of an I, it's an A. O R N. Ornament. Ornament is, is spelled like that, isn't it? Oh, okay. We'll go ahead and try it. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll work it out. Yeah, it will figure it out. So we'll let that run and I'll, I'll just quickly go back to my slide deck. So this is what we're doing just now. So some of the useful prompts are forward slash info, and that gives you information about your usage. So if I do forward slash info, it tells me how many hours I've burned, what, what subscription you're on and that kind of thing. So that's, that's good. Uh, and then you've got forward slash private, and that toggles private mode, but that needs that top subscription. Forward slash public puts it back to so everyone can see the images. And some useful commands, if you're doing, particularly if you, if you want, say, um, you, like people in the shot, you can do things like no expression and no emotion. And you can get just like a normal, almost like a passport kind of photo. And then that would be useful if you then want to create a comic strip and you then want to then start from the base image and then say, no, I want him smiley. No, I want him angry. No, I want him crying. No, I want him sad. And that's how you, you can kind of build up different uh, expressions based on the same character. And no background, which I've tried, works about 90% of the time. You can say, uh, well, we'll try it in a bit, but basically you can get it. In fact, white background is, is probably better. And then you can just get the character and that's perfect then for dropping into Canva or Photoshop. And you can just, it, it's, it's a layer straight away because you can cut it out. So let's go back because I think I heard the Discord noise. So one of them is finished. Oh, wow. Wow. It's best put a bird on as well. <laughs> which one? Which one does he like? And I'll upscale it. <laughs> wow, that's that's impressive. Wow. Yeah, number one. It's uh, number, number one. Yeah. The only problem is, is it is cropping the the circle, the ornament yeah. itself. I think this needs to have a bit more space around here. Yeah. Now, Wayne, what would yeah. you? There was a good question about training. What's the best way to learn how to use Mid Journey? Um, watch this video again. Okay. Afterwards. <laughs> well, I would suggest going to the to the general chat where everybody's creating things, and you'll see the prompts that everybody is using. Yeah. Copy those prompts to a notepad, and then try it out yourself. You yeah. know, tw tweak the uh, and tweak the the. the Imagine on there, uh, change different settings. Uh, we, I, I guess I could send off a, a couple of uh, posts on this. In fact, I'll, I'll put it on the, in, I'll put it inside of the Geek Out Fridays membership is I'll put some reference links that you can try in Mid Journey that have a lot of um, settings details. So you can try these different settings with ultra realistic, photo realistic, yeah. uh, all the different settings that we've used to try it out. Guys, this is, you know how the internet started and Facebook started and 
and it kind of took away a lot of your time because you had to figure out what all this stuff is. <laughs> For that one? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a children's book just crying to be written. Cartoon girl character doing the shopping. I mean, look at that. And the, the cat one was good. It was at the top. <clears throat> An orange tabby cat walking down a wood-lined hallway with windows on the right side of the hallway. Moonlight is shining through the window. Not other light is visible in the hallway. Well, he had a really good go at that. That's fantastic. That's that's amazing. I mean, that's that's the chapter title right there of, of one, you know, the, the fiction book you're writing. Yep. The tale's kind of wonky, but... It looks yeah, the tale's a bit... <clears throat> So uh, back to the server, because I think the next one's finished. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. It's, it's okay. But um, you can yeah. see, I mean, you can do a lot of variations with this. Um, Wayne, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over the screen because I think there's a great question out there. Okay. Um, and I'm using a product called Smart Mockups, and I'm... I'm just going to, the question was, is can, how do you send an image to you? Can you maybe demonstrate a, a POD image? I'm using a product called Smart Mockups. There's Drop Mocks. There's, uh, let's see, I've got to share it first. Don't I? Okay. So I'm using this right here to, to show you, you, any of the, product on demand, uh, POD services that you use that actually prints the product, they will have, they will give you the ability to upload an image. You need to upscale your image, uh, you know, minimum 1080 by 1080. That's the minimum that you would ever want to send. Um, I, I like to send something like a, a 96 DPI or higher uh, to it, but you want to also be able to uh, do a, so I'm going to take my, um, or I'm going to take Wayne's uh, image right here. Okay, so it's kind of showing you, this is just some print on demand. So that's a coffee mug. I don't know if I'd use that coffee mug, but let's take a look at, um, you know, you could do t-shirts, magazines, books, laptops, frames, uh, mugs, tablets. Uh, let's just see what a mug looks like. This is how I design all my mugs here. Um, not, it's not that challenging. It's just pick a logo and it designs it. Now, I probably wouldn't, I probably would not use it as a mug, but maybe, uh, let's see, screen layers, printing, cards, posters, but I would definitely make a poster out of it. Okay, now, if you're going to a print on demand, they have uh, canvas prints and they have uh, probably metallic prints and they have um, oil, oil prints that will take your image. The higher resolution it is, the better quality you're gonna get. But you're also gonna need some mock-ups for social media. So this is some great mock-ups for social media. I'm, and maybe this is not the right image to use, but you could see you know, you make your mock-ups and that's what goes into your shopping cart or your print-on-demand, uh, uh, whether you're using Shopify, Etsy, or, uh, you know, even Groovecart. So you'll need some mock-ups to go with it, but the actual print-on-demand is going to take your image and give you some examples of the product that, that you're choosing, okay? So I just want to kind of show that. This is, I mean, you, Literally, you could take a development that you have and make a mock-up of it and then send it to your print-on-demand and put it into your store probably within 20 minutes of the, of the final render. So that's why this print-on-demand with AI art is going to be really big uh, in the coming, uh, probably in 2023. If, if we're predicting anything, this is going to be the, one of the hottest items out there. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and give it back to you.
Wayne, I think I got you on mute. Yeah, I muted myself <coughs> while he was talking. Um, I noticed that uh, Walt was talking about um, copyright and being, you know, if any lawyers are going to be after you for you doing this. If, if you look in the terms of Mid Journey, you're completely free to use the images however you wish, commercially and anything. Um, if, if, you, if your company makes more than a million dollars a year because of the images that you create, then they obviously want to speak to you. But until that point, you, 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 we're good to go. But you don't, you haven't got copyright of the image. Discord, as I said before, can use the image and you've, you've got no comeback. But, but I think the next step is you take it into Photoshop, you take it into, um, what was the one you, you said that can make different poses from it? Stable diffusion. Stable diffusion. And, and very tweak it. yeah make it completely different yeah make it make it your own tweak it copyright laws never envisioned ai art coming in and who owns the copyright on it so legal precedence it probably has not been set yet um, on who owns it how how they're shared how a rev share is done or anything like that so just kind of follow the terms of service of whatever of AI art tool you're you're using, um, and I think you know, in two or three years that would be a good question to ask an attorney. But right now, who knows? It's yeah. I think if you tweak it and make it your own, um, you're in a different kind of scenario. But guys, this is print on demand. I mean, if you're going to take like this house and put it on a, a frame, uh, you got all the rights in the world with it right there. I mean, you're yeah. not going to make a million dollars with it. No, this is but one it's that a good, uh, it's a good side hustle. Absolutely. I mean, I've I've created one and I've printed it and it's on my wall because it looks fantastic. Yep. Um, Greg put, how about restoration water damage? So that's what I typed in. So this house is flooded. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't take long for you to vary it up a bit. Um, you know, bathroom flooded with water or something. Yep. To, and you, you've got yourself you've certainly got i mean one of the one of the main uses for this is not just featured images for posts but featured images for ads yep get that, get that click someone's going to click on something that that looks like it's been rendered in unreal um rather than someone that's just knocked something up you know and, and the cool thing with this is Let's say that, uh, can you expand that last one on water damage? I love number one, because it's kind of dark and, and gloomy and you see water kind of coming into the house. I would use this in a second. If um, water damage has you down or, or you know, get a, a title with it. I Wayne is using a three by two ratio. Guys, what I would recommend is using a 16 by nine ratio. That's your uh, 1280 by 720. Version four doesn't have 16 by nine. Oh, well, which then. is why when when we upscale them, um, I mean, you, if you go to 16 nine, you can say aspect ratio 16 nine, but you'd have to go back to version three. Okay. Um, which at the moment, uh, version four has got all the tricks in in it. So. If you have a three by two and you want it to fit on a 16 by nine, you're going to have to expand it to expand go 16, yeah. 16 yeah. by nine. Or the trick that I like is I take it to Canva and I, I crop it. I, you can even take, uh, expand that, uh, the house image there. I'm just, I've upscaled them the one. I'm just waiting for it. To oh, finish. okay. So I would take that image mm -hmm. and you can skew the image slightly. A three by two is great for skewing, meaning, you're, you're going to squeeze it down from the top to the bottom. So that house is kind of tall structure. By squeezing it just slightly to a 16 by 9, um, you, you it won't distort it that much that it won't be recognizable. So you can do that, or you can put it in a different frame. And that's kind of what I did on, 
in, in Canva for the for the image that you all saw with the chimpanzee. I took Wayne's three by two and, and expanded it up. So all you really see is just the, the head of the chimpanzee. Um, so there's there's a lot of options. Play around with it with Canva. Um, but you're wanting a 16 by nine image to to be your featured image on WordPress. Uh, and also your YouTube thumbnail is a 16 by nine. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they'll change it because everyone they, they know we all oh, yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. Because at least this is landscape. Yes, yes. There we go. It's really okay. good, isn't it? Oh, it's great. It's uh, it's, it's even right. It's even rain. It's, it's, it's it looks like it's very depressing. Like your house is is flooding. I mean, if um, you could use this immediately as a featured image. Cool. So. Um, Back to the slides quickly. Oh yeah, uh, just try these. No expression, no emotion, but white background. So basically, you can say, um, you could say you wanted a um, cartoon cat for children's comic book, comma white background we'll look at that next so using chat gpt to build prompts now you knew we was going to go back to that didn't you <laughs> <laughs> so what we what i've discovered is that you can pretend if you want an image, you can pretend that your image is already a work of art and you can ask chat GPT to describe it. So you basically say, describe in a short paragraph the portrait and then you fill in the rest what you want. So if I go back to uh, this school is finished, I think. There we go. Look at that. Oh, wow almost white background but if you if you give it a few more goes eventually you can you can do the minus minus no background minus minus no black lines you know and eventually it will come up with something on a white background and it, it, to be honest if you took number three it wouldn't take long to to delete all that away you could even put it in a no background remover tool and probably do it for you yeah so you'd have that clipped so um let's go back to the browser chat gpt uh we'll refresh it because it's bound to have time there so if we what it saved somewhere Describe in a short paragraph the portrait of, and, it's, and then what is it that you want, of, um, of the house that suffered water damage. and needed repair. <clears throat> Let me get chat GTP to describe what this fictitious portrait of this house looks like. <laughs> so the house that suffered water damage was a two-story brick clad building with a pitched roof and a small front yard. The exterior of the house was in need of repair, blah, 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 blah. Take all of that. Go across to Discord and imagine and type it in. While that's working, 
that's that's amazing. I want to do it, go back over to chat and let's open another one. Okay. And describe a portrait of uh, of the Queen Queen Elizabeth sitting at her throne with a heavy metal rock band jacket or something describing what her jacket looks like or, or what she's wearing. Now, guys, what, what we're doing right here is I saw, I was at a store uh, in downtown McKinney, and there was a beautiful artwork of Queen Elizabeth sitting at her throne, and she had a heavy metal rock band jacket on. And <laughs> it was being sold for $12,000. It, it, didn't, it didn't like that. She's the symbol of a national unity, and it's ceremony. <laughs> so... But we could put that yeah. into this. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. So it said it was, it suffered water. It was a two story brick clad building. There you go. Wow. <laughs> I hope y'all are really happy with the geek out. The geekiness the, of the, the geek must, out. <laughs> yeah, the must, some light bulbs must have gone off. <laughs> now, there's a tool we talked about earlier this year uh, called Prompt Author. You could run it through that, but chat blows away any prompt that you could ever. And, and, and try this also if you've got Jasper. Try the, the chat command in Jasper. Then take... Take the, because, you know, you're a marketer, you want to split test everything. Take that prompt and put it in. <laughs> That's kind of dark. Um, it's, it's still rendering. Oh, okay. Um, take the prompt and put it into Jasper Art. I mean, it's only fair to, to test it, especially if you're paying for it. Uh, test it against Mid Journey, and you may get a completely different look. Oh, my gosh. Expand that one out. I, I think number one may have hit it. Wow. <laughs> or number three. Oh my gosh. That all that all brilliant. Oh, that is incredible. Number one's really good. <laughs> Guys, which one would you want to upscale and buy? <laughs> so use TV names, use TV shows, use movies. Um, Let's even put the Union Jack behind her on number three. That's. <laughs> I like number three. Three is good. Yeah, I do too. I, I like number three. Even the hands aren't too bad, considering it doesn't no. really, you know, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I had sent you something early uh, before Christmas about uh, testing it with um, It's a Wonderful Life. Can you show us oh, yeah. what, what you did there? I typed in, if we scroll back a good while. So then these are the images that are on the backdrops of my slideshow. Abstract design with mute colors, that's all I did. And then I uh, brought the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you... Transparency. That's it, you, you bring, it, bring it down to about 20% so that it was just in the background. There's the uh, the Wizard of May that was on the Kick Out Friday. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, yeah, and how you learn it is just keep on playing. But, yeah, here we go. An up-to-date scene from the film, It's a Wonderful Life. And it, it kind of looks rendered as well. It does, they don't look like real people. Which I kind of like, and it knew it was black and white. 
And then this one, iconic scene, every time a bell rings from the film, it's a wonderful life. Now, number one's probably close. Yeah. Number she, three's not bad. Yeah, she looks a little bit like the actress. If that's meant to be Jimmy Stewart, it, 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 mm, it's, it's close. Good. It is close. close. Pretty good there. Yeah. So back to... Um, <laughs> I, I love that portrait. Uh, now, because of his style settings, you can tweak the style settings to, to give it different color backgrounds. And, and it looks like maybe this one style setting he's using has a beignet around it. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different prompts you can use. We're going to, uh, we'll put some of the prompts in the um, membership course. Okay, this, this, this one I've discovered, which is still in test. If you can create a featured image for a blog post by doing dash dash creative, and then, but you have to do dash dash test or dash dash test P. Now this is because uh, it doesn't work in version four. It's like a test version that they're dropping. So if we, if we go back and look at that, so if I get rid of my suffix, To, to blank it out, you just um, you do space. So you're going to type something and just press return, or, or maybe not. Maybe you just press return. There we go. Suffix is now removed. So now it's lost all my version four and that kind of stuff. Um, but now you're still laughing at the queen, aren't you? <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Um, so if we look, um, dash dash creative. So if I was to say, imagine. <clears throat> And we want, um, let's stick with um, bathroom, water damage, um, dash dash creative. You have to use dash dash test. And what that'll do is it usually creates, um, sometimes it creates one image. Um, but then I think they're more 16.9 kind of looking. Looks like a finished bathroom. I don't know about water damage. Yeah, it's, it might be hard to show water damage on it. Maybe. But you can see they're working on something for exactly what we want. Yeah. It's pretty good, really. I mean, it's not water damage, but it's pretty and, and to be fair, let's do let's do one more before you wrap up the slideshows. Um, imagine Abraham Lincoln on a Harley Davidson chopper getting ready to ride. <laughs> As a creative or just normal? No, use what you had before your your. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, version four. And then I think you had that 3.2. Aspect ratio. There you go. And the, the latest style, which is pretty good, 4B. So guys, sometimes when we're, you, you don't see a development happening as fast as you want in RSS Masher or booster pages because Wayne and I have been playing. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> these are more, uh, in fairness, these are more square like Instagram, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, and if you want a big tip for being on on the Geek Out today, um, start creating 
a new Instagram account and and find the niche and theme and create all the posts using this and just post twice a day. Yeah. The, the images are going to be fantastic. The image and, and this will people will follow you on Instagram yeah. or, or Facebook so, or Pinterest. And do it, don't do it tomorrow or next week. Start today. Start yeah. tomorrow. But don't start in two months' time because you'll have missed the boat. Because eventually it'll get flooded and eventually the, everyone's Instagram account looks marvelous and then it'll just be normal again. And I'll, I'll add two images. Yeah. Copy your Go prompts. On. Yeah, copy your prompts and put it with it. Because if, if you want to come across as you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's okay. I wouldn't say it was a Harley Davidson, but yeah. at, least I've put, at least I've put him on a bike. <laughs> I think number two would be like the first motorcycle out there. <laughs> yeah, that looks like they found a stock image and just used it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. It's that's pretty funny. Good. Okay. Well, go ahead. Let's finish up the slides. We're right at an hour and a half. Yeah. Let's go back into um, to here. Yeah, Garen said specify a model. Um, yeah, I, I would I would have. And you got to play around with it to figure out that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, well, one of the other chat GPT things, which is, I'll probably have to share you because it's, can you add some descriptive words to make the text more visually elaborate? So let's go quickly back into chat. Oh, what was that? New chat. I've got that copied, so I can just drop it in. Okay, can you add some descriptive words to make the chat more elaborate? And then you put what you want in here. Um, um, Abraham Lincoln on a Harley Davidson motorbike. Um, it's spelled Davidson, correct? Uh, it's Maybe David. I missed, missed the S. Garen, what was the movie that was in the '60s with the American, uh, with the chopper, um, and it had the American flag on the Easy Rider? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. um, and put in there, I, um, Easy Rider influence. Yeah. Full color. Well, let's see what chat does. Okay. Now the clever bit, which is the next bit on the slide. Is this. Could you write 10 long prompts, four lines with all these? Wow. As the sun sets on a warm summer evening, Abraham Lincoln takes to the open road on his Harley. The powerful engine roars to life as he channels the rebellious energy of Easy Rider, leaving the stresses of the presidency behind. Perfect. Okay. Now take that and, and copy it over before you hit enter. We need to, the bike was called Captain America. Okay. I'll add that onto this. Yeah, um, I have to scroll up. Scott said number three is only one Bitcoin presently. Um, he was referring, I think, to the Queen Elizabeth. Um, guys, after this, we're going to upscale a few of these images and we'll put them in the membership uh, portal. So it's it's fair game. Y'all can use them, whatever you want to use them for. 
but I'm, I'm going to steal uh, that Queen Elizabeth. That's, that's absolutely an amazing image. <laughs> oh, that's right. that's, now that's using, <clears throat> um, it may have defaulted to version four because I got it in my settings, but it hasn't got, but this one is the next one that it's going to do. Um, is version four style four B. Yeah. Now, how do you reset that as your as your prefix, as your suffix? So if we if we do forward slash prefix suffix, and then do a space, and then I'm going to say I want minus minus version four space minus minus aspect ratio space three column two space minus minus style space four b now it'll append all that automatically for me on the end of everything i ask it to do okay <laughs> i like number four but it it's hard to tell that's abe lincoln there yeah, I think because of the easy rider, it's influenced the the kind of style of the image. Yeah, but wow. I mean, this is this is pop, this is comic art right here at its best. You can take one of these, hand it off to a, an artist, and he can make different scenes from it. I mean, it you, it's it's just incredible, absolutely. Okay, um, you want to finish up your slides so we can? Yeah, the. Um... The, the other chat GPT trick is, um, can you condense that description to focus on nouns and objectives separated by a comma? And then you just take all of that and throw it in. Because it's, it's actually like perfect for when you're typing things into the into the mid journey, you comma separate them with all the different things that you want. So you just ask chat to, to do it for you. Copy that. Paste it in, and then one of them wasn't commented, was it? Uh, hmm, okay, for you. Okay, while it's doing that, I'll go back to my slides. Okay, so we've gone through that, gone through that. Could you write 10 prompts, we've done that. Okay, you can also add a 3D render tool as a prompt. So you could say, and do it in the style of Unreal Engine. Do it in the style of Unity. So I've, I've listed all the ones that, that, that work and there's 27 of them that I've found. Um, so if you probably want to grab a screenshot of that and we'll do the same. And, if I screenshot it as well, we can then put it with all the rest of the stuff. Yep. So you can say, um, Abraham Lincoln, blah, 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 comma, um, Unreal Engine or Octane Engine or Cycles Render. You get different kind of versions based on the, the engine tool that it uses. Okay, some of our images which you've seen. So I use chat GT, GPT to come up with a description. And all I said was describe in a short paragraph, the portrait of a fantasy world magician. And it gave me a chunk of text and it created that, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I used that as a reference, which you know how to do now. And I, all I said was use that image. And then I typed the word chimpanzee. And that's how we built that one.
wow. which you've seen. And then I referenced the same image and I said cat. And we ended up with that. <laughs> so you could be there all day saying, okay, now I want a, a, I want a dog. Um, I want a gu guinea pig. Uh, I want a horse. And, and, it, and it just does it. So I'm, I'm just going to reiterate what you just said. You went to chat GPT. You came yep. up with the description. And then you created an image in Mid Journey, and that's what got you yeah. the wizard. Yeah, the prompt you... I typed in Chat GPT is the one under the picture. So in Chat D G G in Chat GPT, I typed describe in a short paragraph the portrait of a fantasy world magician, and it spit out at least six lines of explanation of what it should look like. That's what I put into Mid Journey, and it created that image. Yep. Wow. And then you, you right click, you get the link after you've upscaled it. And I just added on the end of it, chimpanzee and cat. And it created, you can see the theme, the hat's the same, the colors similar. They've even holding an, an orange glow, well, he has. I mean, the eyes on the cat is fantastic. So, yeah, so you, you, you were saying, yeah, I use chat GPT. Yo. It, guys on the call right now, you're you're seeing something that would is, is what's possible that people won't know about for six months to a year, unless they're actually on our Geekf Friday call. I would encourage you to do exactly like this and create some images with chat, and then upscale it, copy that link, and then start adding animals to it. And then take these animals, upscale them, and put them in a, either a print-on-demand, put them in your Instagram, and just start talking about, you know, what you're able to show them. You can make a course from this one slide alone. You could have a course that you could go out and teach. I, I hope y'all appreciate this. I, I love this training, and I, I love getting geeky with it. Um, and <laughs> it is a big rabbit hole to take you down, but. You know, you've got a little time over the weekend. It's it's New Year's Day. You have nothing to do on probably the day after New Year's is have some fun, make some money. And the last one I got, which you've all seen, I told it to do an abstract of a Christmas scene, and that's the one that I liked. But I then uploaded images of myself and Damon. So I was combining two images together with the keywords of Santa and Elf. And it took a couple of iterations, but that's how we came up with Santa, Damon, <laughs> and Elf, Wayne. <laughs> and, then we, and then we just took all that and then I created the, the graphic in Photoshop with all the text on, et cetera. Yep. Yep. Um, so I, I hope you appreciate, I mean, this is like many, many, many hours of, of investigation um, condensed into two hours for you so that you get a really good start um, into, into AI images. And we should have prefaced the call before we got started. Um, we're not responsible for any um, of your family or friends being disappointed that you're not spending time with them over the weekend. <laughs> 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 have fun with the with this guys and um oh this wow. is the one that this is the one that chat gpt came up with after my um <laughs> asked it to create it with commerce <laughs> it's not quite a harley but number three is the closest but it doesn't look like him look almost trying to travolta almost <laughs> yeah number two is pretty good oh that's amazing amazing um and for the guys that just joined us go go back up to queen elizabeth that is that number three, Scott uh, Scott says that's a bit that's one Bitcoin right there. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Scale number three. Yeah. So y'all get creative. Um, you know, post them inside of our Geek Out Fridays um, uh, Facebook group. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, just go in and post it there. Um, I want to see what everybody creates over the weekend and and just have fun with it. Um, we want to wish you a happy new year. I hope this is uh, giving you something to kind of smile about and have fun. 
it's not all about marketing. Sometimes you got it. You just got to have fun. You got to take a break. And, and it, what Wayne has showed you, it's not a high cost. In fact, you can do this inside of their own free version. But if you're going to kind of keep secret what you're doing, you probably want to at least have the $10 a month or $30 a month um, bought version of Mid Journey. Um, yeah. And then yeah. again, try these out on Jasper. Uh, the Jasper art, you know, it's, it's a good comparison to see why we're showing you Mid Journey. Okay. Wayne, anything else to add? No, that's it. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thanks for listening. We'll have the replay probably in a couple hours. Very, very excited that you could join us this year and on Geek Out Fridays. Uh, we've got a big year ahead of us. Uh, we probably, we may delay the, the opening of, of season four, where this was the end of season three. So season four of Geek Out Fridays may start near the end of January. We, we haven't determined yet, but we're going to bring, we're going to bring more fun stuff in there into Geek Out Fridays. Um, than, than just marketing automation. I, I mean, I hope hope you've appreciated all the AI stuff that we're talking about because that's the future. That's where we're all going with this, especially if we're marketers, is we've got to be able to know how to use the tools that are present. And if you want a client, this is the way to get a client is make them a, make them a mid journey because <laughs> uh, this will get their attention. So thanks a lot. Happy New Year. And we'll see you on another call. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.